Hi everyone. So we thought we'd start a little bit different. What are we going to make? Acorn box. So something a little bit different. Okay. So most of you, do you know me by now? Hopefully, I'm Jason Breach. So we're back to another woodworking wisdom turning session. It's quite nice to get back in here and do a few things. Me and Ben got a couple of pre-records we've been doing, so it's nice to come back and do a bit of turning. Now the video we're going to do today, or the session. Maybe about a month ago, a little bit before that, we did the basics of hand thread chasing. Quite a difficult thing to get right. Quite a task. So I've given you a bit more time to practice. This was meant to be scheduled like a month ago, and I'm sorry it wasn't on. It was my fault. Okay. Um, so going to do this box as a finished item. So we put it up on here so you had a brief look. Um, this has got oh, hand thread chase thread in here. All right, just going to bring that up a little bit because I think it will look good. Just to oh, bring my arm around. You can see the thread appearing now. Okay. Quite tricky to get right. All right. So now this is in Laburnum or Golden Chain Tree. If you're over in the States, you guys might know it as that. I, I love this as a material. But this one I did at home, tricky as anything to do. Now, I did say you can work with different materials. Laburnum's quite hard and quite dense. So I did manage to get away with doing it in this. Used a bit of super glue. That can be good. Harden those fibers a little bit and then cut the thread. So we're going to do that possibly a little bit this afternoon. All right. So we're going to make a cone box. So we've done a little bit of prep. Got a few things done. Um, let's have my bit of polystyrene back. Because I'm going to want that during the afternoon. Just going to move our table. Got the check on the label ready. Um, I played around earlier with some timbers. A few of you, when we did the thing a month ago, kind of looked up and said, what wood can you use? The ideal thing, boxwood, African blackwood, cocobolo, lignum vitae, some fantastic materials. Some of them are difficult to find and get hold of. So today, I'm going to use a piece of boxwood. I, I want a little bit of a chance, all right, okay? And then I'm going to use a piece of ash. Oh, my God, whose idea was this? Okay, so we're going to throw that, that ballpark thing at you a little bit that you can actually get away with. And I'll show you a few little things that I've done, a bit of super glue, some wax, all those little tips, all right? So I've already done a little bit of prep. Why? Because we try and say we're going to do a video in an hour. This just worries me immensely that we can do this in an hour, all right? So I feel a bit pressured. I don't think you guys, I don't know if you guys ever quite realise, I mean... I get nervous before we do this. I mean, Ben sat here laughing because he's the, he's the right side of the camera, I think, this afternoon, but he does get a little bit nervous. Don't it, Ben? Come on. Yeah. Don't get nervous? Yeah, we all get a bit nervous. Okay. So we've got our piece of ash. We are going to do, and let's just separate the box, come back into play a little bit so you can still see me. We're going to do the base bit first. Okay. Let's go do this first. Um, we're going to hollow the inside, then we're going to cut the thread. We're going to shape the outside, so most of that bit, then we can do the lid. The lid I'm going to do in the box with just to give me a bit of a chance. We don't need the tail stick, so we're going to lose that. Still working on the little lay. Why? I quite like it. It's nice to use, a bit more compact. The tail stock's lighter to lift off. So my bit of ash, I did a bit of prep on earlier. I even had a play and made sure I could cut a thread in this. I just want to make sure I felt a bit confident. So I've got to lose this stub that's on the end. So a lay we can put on. We've got set of O'Donnell jaws. Uh, just going to knock the stub off then, all right? So just get, that, get that out of the way. All right, so we're going to do the inside first. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a guideline. as a pencil line as an opening. Sizes, if that's where you're kind of going to get out a little bit in a minute. Nothing set in stone on this. I can measure things for you if you want as we go through. I'm just cutting a little V in the middle. Okay. Ben, you're smiling. I'm worried now. No, it was because the question was about sizes. And, you, and then you said um, that you would go through the sizes as you go. Um, so a question from Cliff. He's asking roughly what size material. Okay. Most of what we've got, let's just have the veneer. here. Look. Let's, let's do this properly. Um, this, I think, is about two and a half inch diameter, 62 mil. Okay, so about 62 mil. We've got about the same length, Cliff, out of the chuck. All right, so I'm probably going two and a half inch. My bit of box we're actually going to take down in diameter because it doesn't need to be as big. 
I've allowed a little bit in length. I cut some stuff this morning to bring in from home to make sure I've got something that kind of what it works. All right, so my box would have bought in from home. I just played around. I did a little bit of an experiment earlier. I played around with a piece of cherry. All right, English cherry. Well, wrong way. I you've got no idea how difficult this is to know which way you're moving on the camera. So you can see the fabric cut on there. Piece of satin wood, which is quite hard material. So I've cut threads in those, just having a play. The satin wood's quite, as much as it's dense, very brittle. Doesn't cut cleanly as nice as, but I can cut a thread in it. The cherry, quite soft, and it's even got a rock patch. Oh, there. This band comes down through. I put some super glue. You can see the super glue on the end here, so I can harden the thread, use a bit of paste wax. So there are different timbers that are there, okay? But at the moment, I've started about two and a half inch square. Lengthwise, about the same. The box would, like I say, you could do about the same length. At the moment, we have set up, we've loaded, we cut our V. I've already got a bit sneaky because I've set a depth gauge for how deep want to be here. So, Cliff, we are 31 mil internal depth. All right. So, I've got a scribe line to give me a guide, just try to see where it is. We want to drill our hole, a bit like a normal box, up a little bit. I'll get used to this in a minute. There it is. Line up with the tail stop. You could use drill chuck if you like. Quarter inch spindle gouge. So much quicker. But I've got to line that up with the centre. That's good. Just down to our depth. Bowl gouge. We're going to remove some of that bulk. Don't want to come all the way out to my line to start with. So flutes on its side. Centre outward. I've got scribe line on the end. I think you might see, just trying to see on there. You can't quite see it. We're not close enough in there. I've got a scribe line about there, a little bit further out, okay? You can see on the overhang gives you, let's go back to three a minute, Ben. You can see where the pencil is. You can see the overhang on the side. I don't really want to come all the way out to that. That just gives me a guide at the moment. Just checking the cameras to see that I'm not blocking your view too much. Okay, we're down to our depth. I want to undercut a little bit now. So I've got my arm over the top, so I'm just looking at the camera shot. I'm going to black you out a little bit, I'm sorry. Just need a little bit more strength there. So I'm undercutting in underneath where my thumb is now. And I'm going to clean it up. So I can work from the middle upwards to create the wall from the top down in. Let's have a quick feel what's going on. I'm going to change round nose scraper. So I'm going to go with my box scraper. Just have a feel. Still a long way off that line. Let's just give you an idea of that pencil line again. From the overhead, there's my pencil line I put on. That's where I'm out to. So I've still got a good quarter of an inch play at the moment, okay? I haven't come all the way out to that line. We can go into the middle, up and down gently. Come out. Just got to move the tail stock I put on the floor, the extraction hose, so I've got a bit of room back better. Sorry, Ben, I overshot. Look at the angle I've got to come in from with that round nose scraper. Now, I've got quite a big dome on this, so I'm undercutting that side. Nice into there and round. Bit of a bite because I'm trying to take, I won't say too much cut, but dropping in on two places on the contour. So you can imagine the hollow in underneath, I'm catching there and on the rim. So a little bit of jump there. That feels quite good. That's not bad. A little bit just to get in the middle. Got that small dot we always get. So up and down. There. Gently out. Gonna go arm over the top with this one. Back in, a lot of angles here. See the top shot, that's good. Come round, bring that together. Have a look and have a feel, okay? 
what we're trying to do is get a nice equal curve flowing all the way from the center with an undercut. Not bad. Last bit, I'm going to chase the easy bits towards the middle. Okay, nice and light. That's better. At the moment, we haven't cleaned up the opening down in here. It's better, Ben, if you go into two for me a sec. Still got a bit to come out. I've got to square it up. I come up to, I wouldn't say a point, but I've got minimal flat edge, less than eighth of an inch, okay? So, done with the round nose scraper for a minute. Ben's got another question. We weren't having any questions. I said we were against it. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so, questions in from Maria. She's asking, are you cutting the female thread first? We're going to do the internal thread first. Now, Maria, I know you haven't been well, okay? So, nice to have you back in, watching. We did about oh, five weeks ago, and I will tell you, the reason we didn't do this five weeks ago, um, I went down with the dreaded bug for a week. So, had that same scenario. Um, do the internal thread first. Why? The, it's supposed to be the harder one to cut and get right. It's more difficult to adjust to fit the male thread, the one that's going on. Whereas I can recut and adjust oh, back in, sorry, this thread easier than the internal. So any adjustment I want to make to make it fit, this is more accessible and easier to get to. So I'm going to do the internal first. And then we do a bit of the screws on. All right. So that's really the reason. It's just making it easier to do the task. Thing going far more scared on. That flows quite nicely. Just going to put the air on for the extractor. Going to bring that over. We're going to go with some 150 grit abrasor. With my 150, I've taken the banjo out of the way. We're going to fold this into three. That does a couple of weird and wonderful things. I can grip it nicely. I've got something which creates friction on the back. I can bend that into that shape. Now we're going to do that now. We, we haven't cut the thread yet, but we're going to sand it. I've dropped in the speed down to generate that peak. We can get into there nicely. Hoping the sound's all right with the extractor going, so I know it builds a little bit of sound. On 150, we're going to pull things together. Pull the shape, bring it round. I'm going to feel the fingertips again what's going on. So one five, have a quick look. See what's going on there, that looks good. 240, done exactly the same, we bent it. Keep the fingertip moving. 400. Got to fold it. Put on your fingers again. Inside. It's amazing how many people don't think of that little thing of folding the abrasor. That means you've got the anti-slip nature of the abrasor paper gripping on your fingertips. Makes it easier to hold. If you try and hold a bit of abrasor and put it in here and sand it, it's all over the place. You're touching bits you don't want to. By folding it, get fingertip control of where I want to sand. All right, so really good for that. Fingers, what's happening in there? Feels pretty good. Now, we've sanded there. We're going to do a bit more in a minute. I'm just reaching for the cellulose sealer, and I can seal inside what I've just sanded. Put the lid back on. I'm just going to put it back out of the way. A bit of blue paper towel. Wipe off that excess sealer. Okay, to rest back up. Now we're going to square things up. We can take the speed back up. I'm going to use my skew chisel with the speed dial and that magnet. That's nice. I'm going to use oval skew. I'm going to use the side of it. So I'm coming in from there. Long point. I've got this nice flat on here. I've rolled the bow a little bit. Might need to come up a little bit. Okay. Gotta be sharp enough. Good. Make that flat, giving me something long enough, I hope, to cut our thread on. Okay, trying to get it square. Not bad. Next base I want to do, just gonna clean up the front opening. Right on the A. Right on that 
if you like, parting tool cap section. So let's come all the way across. You can see what's going on. Nice and lightly with that steer. I can move it back and forwards just to press that surface. Last and most important thing, I need to take the corner off the opening. That sharp edge. I want to soften that. That's going to help us next. Okay, good. We want our arm brace. We used this beforehand. We've got that hook on the end of it. We can use that. Okay. Going to bring the tool rest out. So, Ben, overhead will be good for this. I'll probably come back a little bit. Now, I can, just for the guys a minute, I'm going to bring it back out. I bought the tool rest and I've angled it away a little bit. That's given me good access. I might try and bring the camera back in in a second. So, we need our arm brace, internal chaser. We've got them there. 18 to 20 TPI. I think this is the 20. All right, we're, we're quite a fine taper or fine cut, all right, for that thread. You can see it's a little bit hollow ground on the top, so I go to a grinding wheel, hold it, grind a little bit, and then diamond fail. All right, so if I want to sharpen it, I'm sharpening the top edge. Next thing I want, and I forgot to bring what I really needed, but this will work. We want things to glide, so it's important. This is smooth, your tourist, a bit of wax. Okay, that can be good. Help it glide, no dents. The robust rests are beautiful for this piece. They've got that stainless steel bar on the top. Reduces friction. Next thing we're going to do, take the leg speed down. All right. I'm going to come all the way down. Three to 500 is a good chasing speed. So I'll bring it down gently because I know if I turn this dial right down, it just stops. 334. How about that? That'll be nice. We make contact. Now, again, just adjusting the toy ref, get a bit more angle. I want to come in at an angle there. That would be square. We're going to come in. We're going to take that corner that we just softened. Okay? We're not going to use the front two, and we're just going to strike it. Now, the arm brace gives me control. It's pulling towards my body. Now I've started to cut my thread, I can take the hand around. What's my right arm as we go down? So if we cut a thread, it'll pull it along. Okay, let's have a quick look. Now, I don't know if you're seeing there. Let's just bring that in. Ooh, a bit thick there. I've got an idea. Let me get the pin look in the back of the chuck. I did throw the chuck on here earlier, really did push it on, so just bear with me. Let's tap that off. I want you to try and see what we're doing. Uh, get my angle right, come up. Can you see the thread in there? Over a little bit. Uh, okay, let's see if I can get it to focus a bit more. Mm, just about, I hope. I'm not sure you're going to see it clearly, right? but we've got to get our thread down inside. Get my spindle lock pin back out. Just seeing what's going on and feeling what's going on. At the moment, I think I taper a little bit. So I'm just going to bring the camera back a little bit. To there. Going back on, arm brace back in. Handle the arm brace under my arm or even right in under my shoulder. Now, beautiful with the arm brace. I can raise or lower the tip. I can also use the hook to pull back to me by having slow speed and the undercut nature of how we've done this box I haven't got to worry about anything grinding out in the back there's a lot of clearance inside so if you can imagine where this is cutting inside here it's pulling in there's nothing to clash it out on and wipe that thread out on got quite a nice thread in there again fingertips what's going on it's not bad all we need to do a tiny little bit more. I've just got some, I'll bring the chin in, look, I don't want you to think I'm cheating. Soft paste wax. All right, a little bit on a brush. A bit like a toothbrush. You can brush that in. What's that gonna do? That's gonna help it glide. So again, I can go on to the, set my angle, set my height, make contact, got to be moving. Nice, light touches. Now, the wax will help lubricate that thread 
give us a cleaner cut. Should be enough. All right. So little tricks there. If you wanted and you had something a bit like the cherry and you find it difficult, you could flood this inside here, and that's the reason I actually sealed it inside with the sealer, because then the super glue won't penetrate that sealer too much, it'll come off, but we could have put some super glue on the thread. All right, so the reason for the sealer earlier was the fact that it will give us a way of protecting what we've already done. A little bit of blue paper towel, I wanna to put a little bit of wax inside now. I'm gonna clear out bit dusty. I was hoping there's going to be more shavings. We're going to get more shavings off the box, but it'll be good. So hopefully that's not too bad. Feels okay. No way of knowing until we get to the end. Another weird thing we could do. Tricky to do with this one. If I wanted to clean it out lightly, I can turn it over my hand. I don't have to have the lathe running it'll pull it in, okay? Problem with the ash and the grain direction up on the side here, you can probably see, you can imagine that coming across quite parallel, get hard and soft particles. I can feel it a little bit if I put my finger to it just inside, but nothing drastic, okay? So, hopefully, we've got our wax in there, better just do a quick buff. I don't think I did that, so I better check. Do that there, buff that up, pull it out. I'm going to change the bits of timber. Oh, which one's that then? Number one. I'll press three or two. Okay, sorry, guys. Cameras have an auto shut off after half an hour. And unless we get to them, come back, you can't see where things are. Can you see the thread in there nicely? Hope so. All right. That takes a bit, bit of doing, bit of patience. Okay. So, first bit done. Bit boxwood. Gold. Okay. Get that on. That's not too bad. I've already cut a thread on this this morning, just playing around, get things working. Go bring that up. Trying to get the tourist in round the chuck a little bit. We'll see where we are there. Not too bad. I'm going to be down here. I might have to play around with a little bit. We want beading tool. Must be on the bench. It's over there. So what I want to do now is set up a marker guide. So I'm just looking at what we have. Not quite. A bit more. Patience with us. Have a quick look now. No, we're over. Want to know how much? Gonna use something to help me. I don't know if it will help your vision. That might give you guys a better view as well. Look. So I'm taking a little bit off here. I want this to fit on there. Yes, I know we're gonna cut a thread, but this is your stepping stone as a guide on how big do I need to be. So just about. Okay, nearly going. Oh, that's quite almost there. Quite nice, almost there. Could have left that. Let's just get that clean that corner up. Right. So you see what we've done, we've lined it up, it'll kind of hold it. Then we can select how much we want for our screwing thread. So let's take this down first. Create feeding tool, handle down low. I'm stopping before I get to that step we've just created. All right. Also know that I've got a bit of bulk on here. I'm going to go bowl gouge, just to remove some of that. Too much diameter, want a little bit out of the way. So we now have 
And it's not like I said, how big a step is it? I think you can probably say it. I think let's just clean that. Yeah, look at that. Look, huh? Possibly a little bit too much though, but if given my sizing aspect, so I'm going to take a tiny bit off there. This bit's going to be where the outer body of the acorn is, so we've probably still got a bit too much. So there. We want something to create a bright line so the thread doesn't hit this wall and wipe out or the tool when it comes along. So I've got to have something as a bright line. So one sixteenth parting tool can come in there. Just to create a small groove. The bit we've got on the front, in reality, has served its purpose. Gonna soften it. The next thing I need to do soften that leading corner all right so we've rounded that corner off this won't fit on but it's just over but it gives me a guideline of where we need to start external chaser so let's get the two back together so you can see the difference internal external i'll move my hand about get, uh, that's it all right so that's what we've used already have one now. Lots of little tea. Again, we've got to take our speed back down. I'm going to come back a little bit with the tourist, but not loads because we've got that recess off the body material. Take the speed down, still way too high. Electric variable makes this so much easier to do. Tourist handle. Coming out now. Let's just drop the camera back out. Look, I'm reaching up just to bring you back, get a better angle. I'll bring you back in the minute. So, this would be square. We're coming diagonally. So, we didn't use the front two, we've started to create our cut. At the moment, I've got a cut up here on the front here, nothing on the back. Now we've got something as a line. We can go into that. We can start to bring my hand round. I want to come down just a touch. Wouldn't think it would make all the difference. Then can you get camera two? You see this hand action now? Oh, got to focus on what I'm doing, not try to look at the camera. Now, cut a thread. Got to start point. Got to start to check it. We're over, which is good. I want to be over in size a little bit. But we've now cut a thread all the way down through. If I keep going, I'm going to wipe the thread out because the top of the chaser, the back of the teeth will only cut so deep. <laughs> Take a bit off, drop it back down. Back in, just checking the speed. Doesn't have to be the same speed as we had earlier, but needs to be something that's controllable. So again, in that approach. Got to stop before I hit the wall. I've got my hand around more square now. Again, we need to start to have a look. Going on. Oh, we're getting close. Take the speed back up. Want to take a bit of diameter off. Drop it down again. I don't know. Why, why, why not just get it the right size when you start? Okay, let me know how you get on when you do this. All right, so back in, speed back down, just checking. Start, a little bit of angle. It'll pick back into our cut. Ooh, caught the chip there. It wasn't good. Presented the left-hand cheek. Right on the edge, it just dropped off the corner, wiped the thread off the start. But okay, we're getting somewhere, starting to screw on. 
I want to lose a little bit mature on the front now. I'm going to square this up just to get it out of the way, make sure it's not going to hit anything. Clean that up. Soften the corner again. Drop the speed back down. We turn off. I just want to check. Just go back on, see what's happening. Okay, won't quite go into there. It's just tight. So back on again. We need a little bit off the top. So got to go faster. Take the tops of those little Toblerone points off if you like. Drop the speed down. Let's clean our block. Still too fast. Better. I'm 334. Again, a little bit of an angle when I come in. Let's see what's going on there now. Okay. So tight, just looking at my thread, looks a little bit tapered. So I'm going to take a bit off. Got to bring my hand around more. Good on. See what happens. Tight. Okay. A little bit more. Which probably means if I'm not careful. I practice what we preach a little bit there. We need to take a little bit off the top. Just adjusting our speed back up. Again, making contact nice and light, picking into what we've already cut as a thread. Need to go a little bit careful because my recess on the back is disappearing back in here. So I need to make sure I've got that line in there. So that 1 16th parting tool creates a nice small gap. Big enough to control what we're doing. Take our speed down. I'm going to lubricate the thread just a little bit now. So a little bit of that soft paste wax. How oh, I'm bad. Let's just see if we can get... All right, so... A bit off there. And then hopefully... Just that little bit. All right. And then you can have your question, man. I'll just... Oh. In reality, I can never breathe in there, and I've done most of the hard work when I get the two together, right? That's all I'm working on, really. Is, uh... How about that, then? Okay, good. <sighs> Stress point's nearly gone now. <laughs> right, okay, come on, then. We got... Um, so a question from Maria. She's asking... Is the um, external thread chaser sharpened in the same way as yeah. the internal? Okay. In reality, yes. Now, one thing you've got to watch if you start using super glue, you don't cover them in super glue. So, Ben, let's do all right. This is okay. I'm tilting it about a bit. You can see my hollow grind on the top. Okay. So, I put this onto a wheel in a minute. We'll do it with a bit of wooden shea. Okay. So, you can see the hollow grind. It comes towards it's, uh, difficult holding these things. Bear with me. There's the back of my grinder wheel. It comes down, right? So I drop this low on the grinder wheel. And then the other thing I can do, which we'll grab in a second, is a diamond file. Oh, but one, I've got to turn it through 90 degrees and sharpen that face. So if you looked at where we are on the workpiece, there's the tool. I'd hollow grind it there. That's your grinder wheel. The other one would be upside down there. So you're doing the chops. Other important thing you can do, which is really easy. There's our edge. I can sharpen it, diamond file, bring it back in. I turn, unless you've ever tried working with cameras in the reverse angles and everything else, you're like, it's fun to do this. There's our hollow, back onto there, okay? So we sharpen that top edge. If I go to a grinder, I probably still diamond file it after because my grinder will tend to be just a little bit aggressive, okay? Ben. So when you buy them, do they come flat? Like gets a flat. hollow grind because the wheel's curved. Mm. And then all I'm doing with the diamond fell, touching that tiny little bit on the front. 
All right. So just, is, is it like negative rake almost? Like a negative almost negative like a negative rake. In reality, and one of the things that the guys that have seen me do my demo, things like my box making tools with the hollow groin, one of the things I've always kind of said, this is nothing new as such. Trying to do it on the curves a bit more difficult. That's modern day grinding techniques, so they can do it on there. But on something like the square one we have long grind down the side, that's the same sort of thing as what we just looked at on there. So the bone and ivory turners, are, um, I can mention a good name for you, a guy called Bill Jones. Uh, let's just see if I've got the right arm rush. Uh, there it is, Bill Jones. All right. Crown, you make these as an armrest. Bill Jones was probably one of the, he was something like the, I don't know, fifth or sixth generation bone and ivory turner based in London. As a, I don't know how old, 87 year old, I think I watched him do a demo and he just almost touched the wood, stroked it. And then just, just goes together. Most amazing thing we ever saw him do, one thread on a revolution. All right. So in reality, it was my new, and literally the tool almost just, wow. Okay, so exactly that sort of technique. All right, let's just check my thread here, Ben. What you got? Mm -hmm. um, so a question from Malcolm. He's asking, what speed are you cutting the thread at? Try and keep your speed low, and it depends on if you've got variable speed lag. You need variable speed lag in most views now. My first lag I had was coronet number one. Lowest speed was 430. That's hard work. Just a little bit too fast. To give you the scope on this, this is still just slightly tight. Now, speed-wise, where we were running when we cut it, it's 294. Let's see what I can go down to on here. 161, a little bit slow. Bit all cut. In fact, 161 can be lovely just to that clean-up cut. It's giving you control that you're not running into this wall. If it's too fast, you've got to engage it, cut it, and remove it before you get to that point. Okay? So quite an important part. Fred's back in there. Good. All right. Done. We, we said no questions on this. Sorry, Jason. It's all right. It's not you. Don't worry. Yeah. I, I love having questions. Okay, yeah. guys. Sorry. So Maria's saying, uh, Maria's asking, would an engineering thread chasers work on wood? I don't it's know, I'm not an engineer. Yeah. Um, in reality, with an engineering lab, you have a different way. There are different ways of doing stuff. Um, you're thinking if you have like taps and dies, you can do it. They have, tend to be held in a tailstock. You have a round component. If you are doing something smaller and this won't get into or it's too small, you can use a normal hand tap and die, yes, as long as the material will take that thread. So, yes, it will work on that. On this sort of size, no, you're going to have to go with that sort of thing. Mm. All right. But if you look back through, and Colwyn's been doing those videos where he went to the guy with the ornamental live. Wow. Okay. Ornamental turning is nothing new. That ornamental live is two, three hundred years. Some of the stuff they made two, three hundred years ago had screw threads sticking it together on a treadle lathe. That's up and down with your foot. How? I can't do it now. <laughs> right? So it's that sort of scenario. This is nothing new, but they would have cut a thread for a hand chaser. Ben? And then um, one from Jenny here. Um, she says, it might be a silly question, but wouldn't you eventually grind the teeth off of the thread chaser? Okay, so no. But don't think it's a stupid question. We are grinding the top. The teeth run all the way down, Frey. So yes, you get to a point where the tool will end up thinner, but I've got a long way to go yet. So the teeth are running that way, okay? So you hollow grind the top, you sharpen the top. You never sharpen the front or you're going to grind the teeth off, okay? Definitely not a silly question. Right, now, just got to panic now. Let's have a quick look. We've got a thread in there, cut that nice. Just checking my depth. I want to know where, and I'm sorry, I'm dancing about again. Look, could have done this earlier. And I could have probably shaped this earlier, but my priority this afternoon really was trying to get that nice screw thread done. That's that. I want to be a little bit longer. Definitely down to there. Going to bring the tailstock back in just to add a bit of support. 
Bring the lever over, that's better. Lift it up a bit. Lock it. Check my thread's done up so it's hitting the shoulder. Tailstock's really there, just add a bit of support, like I said. Then we're going to go bow gouge. Spin around the corner off. I thought I'd sharpen this before it came in. Oh, I don't know. So, spin that round. This side, we want any of that. What are we going to use it for? Oh, no. Let's take it off. Let's see, we got something just a touch sharper. Well, hey. So that's a little bit, that's adding support to our shape, we're a bit long there, we've got a bit to come back still, we're going to round this off. A bit long, we'll see in a minute. Bring that round, I want this to come down a bit more, but we're going to have a look in a sec. So we've knocked off the shape, working with a bowl gouge, I find it's got more strength. Gonna undo. I wanna know where I have thickness. So I get my fingers in, I've got a little step here we're gonna lose. We've got a bit of thickness still in the base, which is good. This is coming off. Just checking our thickness working round. Put it back on, screw it on, that beautiful. Do it up tight. More mature off the bottom, which is good, but I want to lose it. Quick look again. Don't take too much for granted on this. Bottomless boxes don't work. I've still got a little bit there. Good. I want to take a bit more off the bottom edge. Side wall's not too bad. I've got to come up to where the join is. So you, going back to your sharpening thing, diamond file is so important. Or if you have oil stone, be good. That needs to be flat. Again, one more cut just to see where we are. And there. Uh, still using a little leg, so this isn't bolted down. You might see things move. But, so it gives you the scenario of, I'm trying to work quite fast for you, get this done. But I've got lots of control with this. Sharp tools, I'm not pushing the lever around the room. In that round. Pick up our cut. Remove some of this stuff. I want it just for a little bit still. I can remove the diameter. Just want to have a quick look again, shape. We've got to do on the top. That's better. Nice thickness now coming round. Quite equal coming in round there. Tiny bit of thickness more in the bottom. We're coming down to an angle point. I want to continue the curve round. So at least I know I've got a little bit we can lose there. Should be all right. I'm there now. I've taken enough up there. I'm going to take a bit. You'll see in a sec of the top on here, which is going to give me access to continue this curve. So I'll get a tiny step on here when I blend it in. Just checking how things flow or shape. So let's take that off now. Back to our gouge. How much diameter do we want? Working that out of the way. That's given me access to get a diameter for that to fit. That's quite nice. Now I'll bring it up. Get things meet nicely. It's going to be really lazy because I've only got that tiny little step. I'm going to go in with the point of my skew. I'm even going to be going to be lazy now. Sheer strike down there. 
45 degree angle. I've got a slight change of direction coming around the back here where I've joined those cuts together. If I can get the tool rest in, I can shear scrape. Lighter cut than I can get with my gouge, just refining things if you like. So, less work to do with the abrasive paper. Comes together nicely there. The stub on the bottom, I'm going to change sugar. I'm going to go spindle gouge because it's got more access. Right into that corner, I want to go. Okay, good. Whilst it's on there and it's held nicely, we can sand it. All right, so let's move a few things. I don't want to suck the polystyrene down the extractor. It could be embarrassing. Two, four, we want the one, five first. Second, got the right one. That's good. Oh, pull that round. Again, working our shape so I can come in from different places. I fold the abrasive again so it doesn't slip in my fingers. One five, two forty. We've got to do the stub on the bottom in a minute. Never go to the four hundred. Bring that round so working that nicely. We've used that tail stock just for support a little bit. Find what we're after. Now, I did wonder about, but we could have actually set this up, made it longer as a stub. And once we left it longer, we could have carved a little bit of a shape on the end of it. Cut it so it's more of a tapered shape, so it might have looked like it broken off the tree. But let's do what we've already done. That looks quite nice. We've got our 400 up to there. I'm just going to grab the sealer. Just going to put a coat on there. That's quite nicely done. I'm going to do a bit of shaping on the outside of the lid section. If I seal this, the lathe's holding it for me. Into there, wipe that off. Okay, so tricky wood to maybe make a thread in. Bit of ash. Oh, we've got a tiny step. Can't have that like that. Ben sat here with his hand up now laughing, but you know, just got to get rid of it. Okay. He's not nice at times, you know. I mean, he just... Okay. That's good. Right, Ben, what have you got, mate? Come on, go for it. Sorry, I was laughing. They're, they're talking about seagulls again. <laughs> um, there's a, a question here. Um, it was a bowl nester. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I've got a question from Clear. Um, he's asking, uh, how does this compare to the Axminster wood thread cutting kit? They're a lot coarser. Okay. In simple, they're a lot coarser. You need to lubricate. So if you go with the thread cutting kits, they are... I think something like six TPI, quite coarse. You'd need to lubricate the front. They recommend linseed oil or something. You might need to soak the wood in it first. More physical. Um, you won't get such a clean thread. Not compared to what we're doing here. I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? What could you want? Why would you want? What? No, sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, all right. So we can lose the tail stock a minute. I have a guide on how deep I want to be with my internal, which is going to be up there. So we need to add a little bit. Come up to there. Like, okay. Again, this is about just giving me an idea of how deep I need to be, where I need to be up to. Parting tool. I've added on a good quarter of an inch. Six mil for those that measure metrics. 
doing a parting shot just to create a black line. I'm looking at my diameter. That I have body bit. Give me a guide of where we need to be. So I've just come beyond that. that tiny bit. Scroll down. Slicing that down. Blend that in. So we can use that side wing. Bring that together. Tiny little bit. I think I've just noticed. Let's see if we can get it. Without the gouge falling on the floor. Got a little line on that shoulder. Only thing I'm going to get in there with nicely. It's going to be that passing tool. Look. Spindle gouge. Just to start our shape there. Don't go going too small with us. Because at the moment we want the structural strength near the chuck. We've got a hollow the inside, yeah? But we're building some of our shape. We need the depth gauge we had is that one. Skew and bowl gouge. Okay, we've got everything. Let's move the bit of weight for a minute. Turn the toy rest around the front. You can lose this wall or that stub. My thumb's working hard here now, pushing everything across nicely. Put the gouge out of the way for a second. Skew schedule to make a V. A bit like an engineer would do a centre drill, just checking my height. Drill our hole. Tiny bit. Oh, that's close. Oh, okay, gouge, we're going to hollow the bulk out. So speed-wise, we're back up to 2,000. So you think we've been doing 200 and something for the thread? Just over 2,000. So sleep on its side, about 10 o'clock. We're drawing from the middle outwards. Already thinking about our shape. A bit deeper, got to put my arm over the top of the handle, add a bit of strength. We can turn it round. I'd expect a little bit of a resistance, it's boxwood. All right, so a little bit of noise, especially on this of the light, which we've got the open stand scraper. Temptation there is just grab it off the wall, throw it into it, but let's see where it touches at the moment. Got to be a little bit careful because if the domes or the corner on the side here is going to catch, it will make it bite a little bit. So I've got a little edge on here. So I've got to look at where I can get into, get that to work. Height wise, I need to be up a tiny bit. Going to bring the tool rest in. So I'm working nearer the stem in the middle. That adds more strength into there. Okay, good. Going to also study things with the left hand. Turn it round. See what's going on in there. We're working down there nicely. Have a feel what we got. Quick sharpen. Ooh, that's sharp on the tip, but okay, we're going to come up round our curve. So diamond file at the hollow grind on the front. That's better. Pull it off tight. Going on, touch and feel, trying to match our shape up a little bit. Just working right down to the front. That's 
quite nice thickness. Ooh. Let's open up a little bit. So I'm working right on the opening. Come down through. Nice and slowly with a pace, giving it time to cut it. All the way in. That's good. So I want something that flows all the way down through. And it adds... It's a sad thing we're having to do this in a video. It'd be lovely to kind of say, oh, come and have a look. That's like nice and clean. Um, maybe the easiest way I could demonstrate that. Okay, bend overhead camera. Pencil. Watch this. If there was anything there, you'd not be able to move the pencil freely. Okay, fingers are better than your eyes. They tell you what's happening. That's not bad. Okay, 150 is that one. Going to put the air on there. So I just put my mic on this smoke. So hopefully, you didn't get anything too much. We sounded the bass already. Need to drop the speed down. We've moved the banjo. Too low on my speed, that's better. Under 700 is a good standing speed. Turn just the inside at the moment. We've got to finish shaping out here. Right in the middle. Two four. Go for a new bit there. Look. So again, we're holding it. It makes it easier to grip, work that shape. Shop in this corner. Four hundred. Go get this sealer. Just going to do inside. Into there. We can do the threads, but I don't want too much on it. I've got to go careful with it. Going to turn the air off over here. Grab a bit of blue paper towel. So we can get into there, wipe that off. While we've got that there, we're going to do a little bit of wax. Let's take some off my brush I've got. So we've got our wax in there. I will probably want a little bit of wax on our thread. Now I need to remember, before I go too far with this stage, that I've got to clean and buff that wax up. I don't think it will. It's just, just kind of being nosy, just trying to see. Okay. No, we could add, and it will do a dual purpose thing. Just looking at the size of the tailstock centers, I could have bought in my wooden bung we used. Oh, which video did we do last? Salt and pepper mill. You know, the bird nester box thing, wasn't it, Ben? The bird box. So we used a wooden bung on the multi head. Could have used that today to add just a little bit of stability. I'm going to use a bit of paper towel. And I want parting tool. I'll bring that back so you guys might help you a little bit. Handle down low. Gently up. So arc the handle towards the middle. So what I'm trying to do now is straight just a little bit more access. Right, I hope I didn't go too much deeper with our internal shaping. Probably should have got a caliper in there in chapter. Spindle gouge, if I can get round here. Ooh, get rid of that lump on the end, look, can I take too much? Just the bevel. Drive right around with the handle. I've got to bring the handle to my body a little bit. Bow gouge won't get into this. You skew fanatics might do with that. Build a nice shape. That's not too bad. Want to refine it. I'm just taking the speed up a little bit. A little bit low. It's only down at 700. I could use the side of the top parting tool. So I can bring this round. I'll bring that up. 
to there. Have a look at my fingertips. I'll take that out. I'm going to buff the wax. Just let us do that. See what's going on there. Fingertips are not bad. A little bit thicker just up here. I could have taken a bit more off the side of the one, but actually it's quite a nice shape. We're going to bring the two bits together. I just want to check. Ben, you've got a question. So a question from Woodwork Learner. Um, are finer threads better for smaller boxes? What, for smaller size? Yeah, so finer thread. Depends how, um, yes. Fine thread's good for, for things like this. I could even actually, now this has got quite a few revolutions to wind it on and off. What kind of, I could actually make this shorter, as in that, that spigot length. I could narrow that down, so therefore it's not as long. That would be good, so you haven't got too many turns to do. Um, weirdly, and I wish I bought it, um, I kicked myself now and I saw it at a show. I said about this the other week. There was a, a little needle case at a local show that I probably should have bought in Boxwood before the advent of such things like plastic, wooden boxes, Held everything. Um, you think glass, wood. We didn't have plastic back then, so you had different materials. So needle cases, those wooden screen boxes you see, they will be hand thread chased. So that was the way of making something, fitting it together. Hell box. So little things like that. So don't think this is you know, anything new. The three or four revolutions to get it on and off. So, just working up round our shape. 240, so sharp on the 150 was the reason I looked at it. Red screen. All right. All right, so just got over with band where we need things for setting up. All right. I'm not really that guy, I just know we're, we're not there yet, but it's a lot to think about, you know, doing this. 400, so we've done 240 up to our 400. Gonna turn the arrow. I wanna do, whilst it's on here, it's gonna be easier to do. A little bit of wax on there. Ride that thread seems a bit tight again now. I can't go altering it now though. Put the lid back on the sealer now. We need that. That's what we're over here for. Let's so the cellulose. We just finished our sanding. We can put the cellulose sealer on there, nice and thin. Gives me a little bit more open time. I brush it on, wipe it off. I'm gonna be really, really lazy. Huh? But to find it, there it is. Just checking things feel touch dry. My parting tool, about one sixteenth. I've got lots of room to get right in the top here. I'm just trying to drop my arm down so we can see what I'm doing. I don't think yeah. shooting too much. I'm going to part that off. Okay. Normally, if you the guys have been watching when we do a box. I'd probably reverse this, put it in, shape it. Actually, you've shaped it really well there. Sensible things we can do. Now, I've got to find the chuck key. Won't hold in there for what I want, but let's see. I said I'm going to be lazy. Really need to change the chuck, but I'm going to hold on that plastic backing. Because all I want is that. So we can use foam pad. Soften that in. I don't go thinking you've got to suddenly reverse this bit to that. That's got, I think, probably a 240 grit on there. Last stage, I probably do a bit of 400 grit in my hand. Buff it over, pull the shape in together. We can seal it. Okay, so blend that in nicely. Okay, let's have a quick look what we've got then. Hopefully... We had something that was screwed together. A bit tight there, but not too bad. Okay. Now my acorn shape. Let's be okay. Tiny gap I've got there. Bring it up. Okay. Slight overshadow line on the, the body within the bit. That's not bad. And I wanted wanted to play with something difficult. I bet. Trying to cut a thread nicely in ash. 
got to be nice and sharp. Be patient. The arm brace is such an important part, all right? That support allows you to lift or lower that internal chaser so much easier to do. Bit of wax on here. This will settle down a little bit. The box would still warm now from the sanding, so it'll cause a bit of, all right? But you can see I can screw it up. I could loosen things a little bit. All right? There are ways I can put this back on the lathe. Whoa. But you can, I think you can see what we've got. Looks quite nice. Tiny little dimple in the middle there. Look. Oh, wow. I didn't see that earlier. Hmm. How can I? No, not now. All right. But get the idea of what's going on. So there you go. Acorn hooks with a frat chase lid in an hour. Oh, my God. So, Ben, you got any more questions? Must have something. I know they said that they couldn't ask questions, but that's quite a tricky little project to do, guys. All right. Takes a bit of time. Make sure... Be a bit patient. Little things like adding the wax help it glide when you're putting it together. It even helps it glide when you're cutting the thread. We did the session, as we said a few weeks back, where I said about make sure your tool rest is clean. Get rid of all those little dents and tinks. Take a file to it. If it's not clean, things aren't going to glide for this. Quite an important part. Two different materials can look nice, can give you a contrast. All right. Something that screws together. Um, I'm going, what, what, what are you going to use it for? You could actually make some nice salt shakers. All right, drill a couple of holes in the top. Ben, ben now going, oh, I want this. All right, so you can have a couple of holes. I don't know about how it sits on the table, but we'll figure that out in a minute. Okay, so we have a, a, a lighthouse salt mill and an acorn pepper thing. Okay, I'm not sure how they go together. I'll figure that out as well. So, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Enough ranting and raving for me. If you enjoyed, love to know. All right, we will see you again next week. Thank you all very much. Bye then.